Good day, Mel Mariah guests and friends. We welcome you into the sanctuary of Mel Mariah Baptist Church for another Bible study. Thank you for joining us on today. Uh, we are exploring the spiritual disciplines, those disciplines that we as Christians need in order to grow and mature in Christ and to expand the kingdom of God. And we are in our last session on prayer. Uh, prayer is a spiritual discipline that we must practice, not just corporate prayer when we come into the sanctuary and we engage in prayer as a corporate body, but more importantly, an individual prayer. We see numerous times in the Bible in which Jesus was dealing with the demands of his ministry. He would heal, uh, he would deliver, he would set people free from demon possession. And after all of that, the crowds, they would come and gather around him. And we see Jesus going to a solitary place, a place of stillness, a place of quiet, and he would pray and he would spend time with God in prayer. And that is what we as Christians have been called to do. So we are taking a look at the model prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses uh, 5 through 14. And we have been looking at the meaning of the Lord's Prayer. So many of us know the Lord's Prayer. We were taught it in church school, or we were taught it when we were five or six years old in Little League football, basketball, or cheerleading, or ballet, or something to that effect. But as we grow older, uh, I'm sure all of us have a desire to understand what the Lord's Prayer really mean because it teaches us how to pray in our daily prayer lives. We have defined prayer as communication with God. It is communication with God in which we talk to God and we are silent long enough to allow God to talk to us. So Prayer is talking to God, but it is also being still long enough to allow God to talk to us. So in prayer, we, we listen, we listen to God. And those who have been around Mount Moriah have heard me say numerous times that God has far more to say to us than we have to say to God. So therefore, listening is just as important or more important to us as us talking. So I wanted us to keep that in mind. So we, we are also, in addition to the talk today, I do encourage you to get on right now, media, and go to the Lord's Prayer with Lori Short. And today we will be looking at uh, sessions five and six, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And session seven, for the honest kingdom, the power and the glory forever and forever. Amen. So let me read this, Matthew chapter six, verses five through 15. It says, when you pray, Jesus says, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand praying in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts 
as we have also forgiven our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And verses 14 and 15. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Amen. Let us pray, Father. We thank you and we praise you for this opportunity to come to study on today. And we ask and pray that you help us to have deeper and more faithful prayer lives. Be the ultimate teacher here on today. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. So we begin uh, this whole notion of this passage of Scripture. Where Jesus telling us how not to pray. Tells us not to pray like the hypocrites do. The hypocrites would stand on the street corners and they would pray allowed so that they could be seen and Jesus says look when you pray go into your room close your door and pray to your father who is unseen then your father who sees what you do in secret will reward you openly so Jesus says make your prayers private and he says when you pray don't keep on babbling for like the pagans who want to be heard for their many words because there's no need for you to use a lot of babbling a lot of words because the father already knows Jesus says what you need before you ask him so Jesus tells us not to pray like the pagans he tells us not to pay to pray like the hypocrites and therefore he tells us how we ought to pray our Father in, in heaven. Uh, our Father means that we take ownership that God is ours, but we also acknowledge that God is the God of everyone, and we are just part of God's bigger story. We're not the only story. We are part of God's bigger story. Uh, we are God's children, and God is concerned uh, about everybody. Our Father in heaven, in heaven means that God has a perspective that is different than ours. God is looking down on us from heaven. And we need to trust God to say, God, I know that you see more than I can see, and, and therefore I submit to you. Hallowed be your name is. Um, praise and it basically uh, all of our prayers should begin with praise because that is what Jesus does our father in heaven hallowed be your name praise gets God's attention God begins to listen when we give when we give God praise hallowed be your name means that God is the center of everything God is the center of the universe and there are simply some things in our lives that we cannot control. It frames the prayer around God and not ourselves. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come basically says that we are praying for God's kingdom to come on earth. But we're not only praying for God's kingdom to come on earth. But we're also asking God, what role can I play in the uplifting of, of your kingdom? Where might I join you, God, in your kingdom building? God, where are you sending me? And we can't do everything, but we sure enough can do something with God's help. Your will be done. Basically, we're turning it over to God and say, look, not my will, but your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Basically, again, it says that God's perspective is different than ours. God can see what we cannot see. And God's perspective is not our perspective. So in the midst of all of that, what we're saying is, God, we trust that your will be done. 
on earth as it is in heaven. It's happening in heaven, and we are asking God uh, to make it happen right here, right here on earth. Uh, give us uh, our daily bread. We are halfway through the prayer. We haven't prayed for what we need. Notice uh, that we give God praise first. But what we're saying is, is that, Lord, give us our daily bread. We are depending on God to give us what we need on today. We cannot provide for ourselves. We need God to provide for us. And God wants us to trust God enough to supply us with our daily bread. And even with that, God gives us extra so that we can give to others in need on today. So we not only pray that God will give us what we need on today, but the extra that God gives us, we need to pray to God what Lord, do you want me to do with my extra on today? But then again, we believe that what we give to others on today, God will replenish us with it on tomorrow. Uh, forgive us our debts. Uh, we have been wrong. People have done things against us. Uh, we may have some resentment, uh, but we need to free ourselves through forgiveness. And forgiveness, we used a quote on last week, is setting the prisoner free and, and discovering uh, that the prisoner, that the prisoner is us. So we ask God for forgiveness and God's grace has been made available to us and therefore we must show grace uh, to, to others. And, and then Forgive us our debts as we also forgive us, give our debtors, asking God to forgive us of our sins and also asking God to help us to forgive those who have sinned against us. And then in verses 14 and 15, uh, Jesus basically says, look, if you don't forgive men when they sin against you, then God will not forgive you. And then in 15, Jesus says, look, if you forgive men of their sins, God will forgive you of your sins. A little commentary on verse 12 and verses 14 and 15. So we give God praise. And, and then we ask. And then we, we confess. So often we start by thanking God. Our Father, we just want to thank you for another day. Or our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for another day. And, and really, even though Thanksgiving should be a part of our prayer, we really do not see it in the model prayer. The point I want to make is, is that our prayer should begin with praise and adoration of God. And then uh, we go into uh, asking the Lord to supply us what we need and, and then uh, we ask God to, to forgive us. So we have in verse 13 what we call a doxology. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. We have two prayers in verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So, and lead us not into temptation, we're basically joining God and making it happen. But deliver us from the evil one is bigger than we are. We need some more power. We need God. So, and lead us not into temptation includes us, but deliver us from the evil one does not. God alone has the power to do that. So let's look at this and lead us not into temptation. 
realizing that uh, there, there are going to be times in which we're going to face temptation. And, and there are going to be times in, in which temptation is going to hit us across our head. And so what we're asking the Lord to do is to help us to avoid the obstacles that lead us into temptation. And what we're saying is, Lord, help us to avoid the obstacles that lead us into temptation. And what we're willing to do is that we're willing to join you in helping us not to fall into temptation. Day after day, we have decision after decision whether or not to fall into temptation. And we know what our temptations are. We know what our weaknesses are. And some are easy to walk away from. Others are not. And what we're asking the Lord is, Lord, help us to avoid the obstacles that lead us in temptation. Help us to walk away from them. Help us to go in another direction. Help us to not fall for the distractions. Help us to have the perception, the knowledge, the foresight when that obstacle comes to go and do something else. So we have to be willing to take the steps that will not lead us into temptation. So we ask the Lord and lead us not into temptation, but help us to walk away from it. But deliver us from the evil one is the second part uh, of, of this prayer. And when we say, but deliver us from the evil one, we realize that there are some things that are beyond our control. We realize that we cannot deliver ourselves from the evil one or the devil or Satan. God is the only one who can do that. And when we ask the Lord to deliver us from the evil one, we are calling on God's power to help us to fight the evil one. And we don't talk much in Western society about evil, the devil, the enemy, etc. But evil is real. And everything bad, the culprit is evil. Behind everything bad, the culprit is the devil or the enemy. And so we make the mistake in not acknowledging that evil does exist. And evil is perpetrated by the devil, the enemy. There is evil in our world, and evil basically is all around us. All we got to do is turn on the news, and, and we see evil trying to take over good. So again, but deliver us from the evil one. That's, that's bigger than us. So we need God to help us to deliver us from the evil one. God is more powerful than evil and God is more powerful than the devil. So when we look at verse 13, two prayers, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lead us not into temptation. We're saying, Lord, we want you to join us in helping us to avoid the obstacles that lead us into temptation. We need you, God, but we also need to do our part in reference to, them to temptation. But deliver us from the evil one, only God can do that because without God's power, we cannot be delivered from the devil. We cannot be delivered from the enemy. So we're asking God to pay us attention. 
And what we're doing is we're also asking the Lord not to deliver the ones we love, the ones we know, into temptation. And we're not only asking that we be delivered from the evil one, but we're also asking that others be delivered from the evil one as well. And then what Jesus is not here, uh, a part of that doxology too is, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the evil one, for thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and forever. Amen. That is the part of the Lord's prayer that is not there. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and forever. Amen. It's not in Matthew's version, but what we do when we say yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and forever. Amen. We are acknowledging one that it is God's kingdom and we are part of it. That ending part says we acknowledge God's power and we have access to God's power. And it also says that God deserves the glory and we are acknowledging the fact that God deserves all the glory and the praise and the honor. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and forever Amen. A doxology, the kingdom does not belong to us, it belongs to God. So, God invites us to pray. And the Lord's Prayer is our model prayer, and prayer is is a spiritual discipline uh, that we must that we must practice. Amen. Let us let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for our study on today. And we ask and pray that you help us to be faithful in our prayer lives. And we ask and pray that we use your model prayer as our example in our prayer lives. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen.